You blasted some bosses and it felt good. But do you have what it takes to do some dungeons? Well, if you do, goddamn is Fire Mage a beast. Today we will take a look at the talents, rotation and gear and everything that you need for Fire Mage in Mythic Plus, so stay tuned. Talents have been switched around in the last few weeks, with certain ones becoming more popular. Of course this matters when you do certain affixes as well. I will go over the most popular choices, but I strongly recommend trying them yourself since they change the playstyle a bit and if you're not comfortable with it, you might lose more DPS than you gain. On the first row, we have Searing Touch. This talent buffs our Scorch, making it an executable talent on targets below 30%. This works well when you are fighting packs. Target the lowest HP one and you will instantly crit generating those sweet heating up and hot streak buffs. For the second row you take Shimmer. You can realistically take whatever you want here, but Shimmer has the most reliable usage across the board. Especially if you find yourself in a long cast you don't want to interrupt. Third row, Rune of Power is still seeming the most DPS gain out of all the options. The talent kind of forces you to not move too much to keep up the buff. You don't have to stay in the same place though. You can move a few yards left and right to dodge some bad, as long as the bad is not too big. Next up we have two options. The highest simming damage dealer on the row is Flame On. Flame On will provide the most DPS gain overall. It gives us an extra charge of flame blast and this essentially gives us more hot streaks throughout the course of a fight. The next option is Phoenix Flames. Although this one seems a bit on the lower side, it does provide additional burst damage. Depending on your group and what dungeon you do, if your tank pulls a dangerous pack that you need to burst down super quick, pick this option. Personally, I play with both and I like Flame On a lot more. Phoenix Flames cannot be casted during another cast, meaning you can find yourself in a situation where your fireball is about to hit the target and you are in your second fireball cast. If the first one crits, you need to wait until the second one is done casting before casting Phoenix Flames. And if the second one does not crit, you lose the heating up buff. This is purely for the purpose of comparing Phoenix Flames with Fire Blast as crit train generators, which Phoenix Flame is not. The tier 5 row comes with utility again. For PvE, you will always want frenetic speed. The other two talents aim at rooting targets, which usually isn't something you do in Mythic Plus. Maybe world questing and definitely PvP though. Tier 6 is another situational talent row and again, takes your group into consideration. Flame Patch is the highest damage dealer on the row. Once you flame strike, you leave an AoE dot on the ground that adds to your overall damage. If the mobs are moved out of the zone, the damage is lost. If the mobs die way before the zone has time to deal its damage, the damage is lost. This is a good example of bad situations for flame patch. If you find yourself in pugs more often than not, you won't have much communication going on with the tank. Either this guy needs to kite because he's about to die on a plus 2, or simply doesn't know what Fire Mage AoE does, which might sound condescending, but things like these need to be taken into account when you do group content, especially if you cannot constantly communicate with the tank. But there's an alternative to this option, and that is Living Bomb. Living Bomb can be cast on a target and after it explodes it spreads once to nearby enemies. The pack still needs to be somehow clumped, but it doesn't have to stay in one place for this to be effective. And we reach the last row, where we again have a few options. Isn't life beautiful? First on the list is Pyroclasm. Pyroclasm transforms our Pyroblast into a super Pyroblast, but you have to hardcast it. What is hardcasting? Hardcasting means you literally have to sit through an entire cast time. It doesn't work when you do instant pyroblasts. The reason this is good in AoE, even though pyroblast is not an AoE ability, is because of ignite, our mastery dot that can spread, and we will talk about this a bit later in the video. The other option you can take is meteor. 
Meteor used to be the most popular choice, but lately has been losing ground against Pyroclasm. But if you think you can't sit through an entire Pyroblast cast without taking damage from mechanics, then Meteor will be a better DPS choice for you. When it comes to gearing yourself up, you have two main options on how to do it properly. Either sim yourself or go to bloodmallet.com and see which Azerite trait and trinket is the best. For other gear pieces, sim yourself again. It's not that straightforward to know which item is good. The stats interact with each other in weird ways and since all gear is very similar, you won't know if 100 mastery and 80 haste is better than 90 mastery and 90 haste. This amazing gear design is brought to you by the lovely people at Blizzard Entertainment. <laughs> it's not funny, Ed. <laughs> hey, shut up! <laughs> well, he started it! But hey, I'm here to make it a bit easier for you. As long as Blizz doesn't do another 180 on talents and traits, what I say here should be good enough for you until 8.2. For Azerite traits, and of course, all of this talk is for dungeons and AoE damage output, you have to think of two aspects, getting the best trait for your eye level or stacking multiple traits. Strictly eye level speaking, the best traits are the engineering ones that you find in the goggles from engineering, followed by the usual suspects, treacherous covenant and blightborn infusion. If you have the luxury of stacking traits, then Blightborn Infusion is by far the best one at the moment, followed again by Treacherous Covenant and such. These two traits usually are very solid for most DPS classes when stacked, simply because they provide big chunks of raw stats. And we know how exciting raw stats are. Ayy. For trinkets, the best seeming one, and not by much, is the Gladiator's Badge. This bad boy drops from rated PvP content, usually arenas. If you don't PvP, because, well, this is a PvE guide, then you might be interested in Whirlwing's plumage. This guy is fairly close to the badge and drops off of Whirlwing, the rare in Stormsong. Again, the eye level that it drops matters and you might have to get a Titan Force to be best in slot. And if this is still not good enough, Opulence in Battle for the Zolalore drops Incandescent Sliver, which is also a very good trinket, very close behind the other two. As a rule of thumb, try to aim for those that, again, provide big chunks of intellect or any other secondary stat. Fire Mages are not that picky when it comes to stats, as most other classes are. Intellect is generally the best stat, so just pick the highest high level gear you have. The more gear you get, the more the stats will fluctuate. This is currently what my stat weights are for dungeons. But this might not be that good for you. If you don't want to sim, then just get the highest eye level. I already released a single target guide for fire mages. With uh, builds and rotations and everything that you need to know for that sweet sweet boss kill or the tyrannical weeks in mythic dungeons where sometimes it might be better for you to simply bring a single target build so i would 100 percent recommend you check it out or if you're simply looking for a different spec subscribe to our channel we already have a couple of guides out and there are more to come in the following weeks also if you think i might have missed something or simply have something to add hit us up in the comment section down below The general rotation for AoE takes into account how many targets you have. Also, the rotation is a bit volatile depending on your encounter, so I will simply list the priority system hoping to make you understand what you should cast over which spell. The most important spell on the list is Rune of Power when Combustion is also ready to be casted. If you talented Meteor instead of Pyroclasm, here is where you cast it and you should always cast it with Rune of Power active, never without. Then cast Combustion on cooldown. Cast Rune of Power if it's almost ready to cap on two charges. If you took Phoenix Flames, cast it here. If you took Flame Patch, cast Flame Strike with Hot Streak if there are three or more targets. If you didn't take Flame Patch, cast Instant Flame Strikes only when there are five or more targets. 
If you took Pyroclasm instead of Meteor, hard cast Pyroblasts when the buff activates. Cast the instant Pyroblast when Hot Streak is active. If you have 3 or more targets and your main one survives for at least 8 seconds, cast Living Bomb on it. If Combustion is active and you have no more Fire Blast left, cast Dragon's Breath. Lower down the priority list is Dragon's Breath again, still if you have 3 or more targets that you can hit. The next important one is converting the Heating Up buff into Hot Streak with Fire Blast. Next up, Scorch only when the target is below 30% HP because of the Searing Touch talent. And fill in with Fireballs to generate Heating Up. Fill in instead with Scorches if you have to move. If you look closely at the priority list, you will see a couple of extra buttons there. For the sake of completion, I left the entire priority system in case you switch talents around. If you don't take Meteor for instance, then you just ignore the Meteor line. For consumables, think of your stat weights and go from there. Although as a general rule of thumb, the feast that gives 100 intellect will always be the best. The same goes for the Kraken gem. Since haste and crit seem to be simming the highest, you can fill in the gem slots with either of them. Although I would recommend haste as default for dungeons. For the weapon, enchant it with torrent of elements for that juicy 10% elemental damage buff. I went into details about fire mage mechanics in the single target video, but here I would like to talk a bit more about Ignite. Ignite is our mastery and acts as a dot on our target when we hit it with some of our spells. Each subsequent spell reapplies Ignite and adds its damage on top of the remaining one. This means that the more you hit and crit your target, the bigger the Ignite dot becomes and the important part is that Ignite will eventually spread to nearby targets. This is a big AoE damage output that you will do, if not the biggest. And the more mastery you have, the more it's worth it to just cast Pyroblast instead of Flame Strikes for bigger ignites. If you like our content, consider following us on Facebook and Twitter. We update you guys with every video that we make, just in case those pesky YouTube boys aren't sending you those notifications. Thanks for watching the video, I've been Flame and I'll see you guys next time.